Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I want to talk to you guys about something that's kind of a polarizing subject. And whether you feel good or bad about it, I I've, I've myself have got quite a bit of experience with this. And I'd like to talk about RFID systems. So the reason that this is going to be kind of an important topic to go over is because a lot of hospitals get talked into buying systems that aren't really well designed for their facility. And I don't think a lot of people understand the commitment when you're making the initial purchase for the infrastructure. Okay. So let's go into it just a little bit. All right, guys, uh, here I have a couple examples of RFID tracking systems. Now there are three major components to an RFID system. You have your tags, whether they're active tags like these ones here, passive tags, which can be like your newfangled credit cards, your passport, stuff like that. They all have RFID tracking tags in them. And even when you go to a shopping center and you buy clothing and they, they scan a tag to erase it, that is a passive RFID tag. These ones are active tags. And what makes them an active tag is this little guy right here. This is a battery, same as this one right here. It's got a battery. So you have your tags, active and passive. You have your receiving antenna network. And then you also have your software suite. So you have your tags, which I've explained. You have your active and your passive tags. There's pluses and minuses to all sorts of tags. Your tags are going to be affected by your read distance, your tag orientation. So whether or not it's mounted like this, like this, or, you know, like this. So how your tag is mounted on your equipment and the orientation of how you're going to be reading it is going to affect your read distance and whether or not you can pick it up or not. It's going to be affected by obstructions. So let's say you have some tags like this mounted on equipment and you put them inside a audio video cabinet or one of those rolly carts. So they're not really exposed to the outside. Well, you have a lot of shielding there. You have those metal walls of that rolly cabinet or the rolly carts that are going to affect your tag. Also, if you have a tag mounted on the top of a piece of equipment and people commonly stack that equipment, you are also creating an obstruction to reading and you might not actually get that tag unless you're right on top of it with the scanner. We have tag orientation, we have obstructions, the frequency of the tags. So the frequency of the tags, there, there's a whole range of frequencies of tags. This tag right here is different than this tag. And I can tell you how I know. Look at the antenna. You see that thing that looks like a paper clip on the side? You see how I got one antenna oriented there in this plane? And I have one oriented in a 90 degree plane from that. You see that? So what this does is this allows you to receive a better signal at you know, depending on how it's going to be mounted. So if it's mounted like this or like this, it just gives you a few more options for reading the tag. But then again, notice this RFID tag. Take a look at these two little bars down here. This one right here and this one right here. Also mounted at a 90 degree difference. And notice how the coils are so tiny. See the difference? One is the size of a paper clip and the other one is a tiny, tiny little spin of a coil. Your antenna is going to depend on the frequency that you are trying to transmit or receive. All right. So this one here being a much larger antenna, this is going to probably be a much lower frequency of a tag than this one right here. This is probably going to be a pretty high frequency of a tag. Now there are all sorts of different frequencies. And I don't really want to go into that because it doesn't really matter. What you should know though, is that these tags are going to be affected by your scan distance, your read distance, and the amount of data that you can put on the tag. So the way an RFID system works is you have a MAC address, which you can see right here on this little barcode. And this one here, it's got a MAC address right there. And what you have to do when you get an RFID tag is you have to scan it 
and it will input in your database the tag number and then you have to assign it to an asset okay so that assignment is absolutely critical because in other words you got a tag just floating out there sure you can read it but what is it you don't know and this is where a lot of places fall short so having an RFID system means that you have to assign a budget and you have to assign the manpower to be able to keep it going because just Joe Schmo off the street, you know, even your average biomed reading tags and inputting them into the database is all fine and good, but you have to maintain the database or else the whole program falls apart. And this is also where the Achilles heel of these tags here in front of me are. So you can see I have two batteries and these batteries have probably about a one year life expectancy. They might have two years, but the thing is, is let's say you roll out 100, 200, 500, 1,000 of these tags, which is very typical for hospitals. If you roll out 1,000 of these tags, that means that you have to budget to replace the tags in about one year to two years, right? Because the tags don't really alert you that they're going dead on the battery. They just quit talking. So your whole tracking system for active tags, if you don't budget for the manpower and the money to update the tags, well, then this whole thing is a waste. Because I'll tell you right now, every single facility that I have ever worked at that has maintained some sort of, of tag system, for one weird reason or the other, they're all sold, these active tags, and you find equipment all over the place with these stupid tags on them, and they're not even used anymore. They're not used. They were sold the world when it came down to selling the system to maintain all this, but either the tag maintenance became too much of a burden or the software. And that brings me to the fourth piece of this whole puzzle. The software suite is one of the most important pieces to the RF system, okay? So you have your tags, you have your receiving antenna network, and your, your antenna network is going to be next to, let's say, elevators, your main entrances to the building, like the loading dock, the front door, side door, stuff like that. And also, you are going to put tags near your entrances to your wards. So if it's near a PACU or if it's near one of your ICUs, next to the door, you're going to have your RFID antennas. They're going to pick up every single tag that goes in and out. Now, it doesn't know the direction that it went. All it knows is, hey, I've seen this tag this day at this time. That's it. And then you would use the, the next antenna down the hallway to determine the direction or where it's at now, something like that. So anyway, guys, uh, you have the tags, you have the antenna system, which is extremely expensive. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions of dollars for these antennas. They place them all over the facility and then some guy just does not budget to replace batteries. It always sounds like a good idea. Yeah, when you do your PMs, we'll just, we'll just change out the tags. But nobody takes into account the fact that you have to re-register the tag in the database, change the tag number, you have to reassign it to an asset, and you, know, you have to do something with the old tag. You have to take the old tag out of the system. It's just one of, oh, it's such a pain, guys. Active tags, they seem like they're a good idea. Yes, they can read write a little bit further than your other tags, but they are just as limited. And I find these, these, these are two I found in 10 minutes. We don't even use either of these systems anymore, but I thought, you know, what a cool video it's going to make to take them apart so you can see what's inside them. I mean, you can tell one of these is obviously way more complex than the other one, but here they are. Both systems are not used anymore. So all the money they spent on the infrastructure supporting these is useless. Let's talk a moment about the software suite. All right, so the software itself is probably the next biggest Achilles heel next to batteries, okay? So the software suite is where all RFID systems always fail, okay? And the reason I'm saying that is because somebody has to budget to sit there and maintain the software suite, and you often have to pay a software subscription to even maintain the system. 
So let's say you were like, nah, we, we don't really use it. We're not going to pay for the software subscription. That means all the tens of thousands of dollars you spent on tags, all the hundreds of thousands of dollars that you spent on the RFID antennas, all that is a wash because somebody doesn't want to spend $30,000 a year on a software subscription to the RFID system. It does happen, guys. So what I'm saying is I'm not here to dog on RFID systems. I have seen them work wonders. But at the same time, you have to budget for the manpower. If you're going to go with an active tag system like this, then budget every year to have a project to replace all your tags. Because just saying your biomeds are going to change out your tags, you know, when it comes to PMs, well, I hope you budgeted for more manpower because that's a heck of a lot more work to, to do that because you have to have a terminal there to re-register your new tag and, uh, uh, you know, assign it to the asset, remove the old tag. It's it's quite the burden. But anyway, guys, that's, that's just for the tags. Okay, let's talk passive tags. Now, passive tags are kind of one of those things where I'm kind of in favor for compared to these because passive tag systems, I've seen hospitals use those for years. And passive tags, in general, are, are nice and plastic. Some of them are kind of foam-backed. And it's like, why would we ever use foam RFID tags? In other words, it's got like a paper surface where the, the barcode is printed. And then it's got your transmitter encased in like foam that's got a paper top. I've seen those. And I keep thinking, why would you put something like that in a hospital? Not only is the tag really proud, so it's going to get impacted and just shaved off, but we use cleaning solvents that are really, really rugged, and they will destroy most plastic and paper tags. But I've seen it. Hospitals buy into it. You know, they buy thousands of tags at five to ten dollars a tag, and then the tags just get absolutely destroyed by the rough environment that is a hospital. So anyway. The passive tags, we use a scan gun and a smartphone because your scan gun can inventory to your smartphone. So let's say you're searching for an asset. You can type in that asset number in your phone and then you can scan around a department or around a room and it will show up on your phone as soon as you register that tag that you are looking for. Now, I've seen some really interesting software suites on YouTube and uh, across the internet for RFID tracking systems with passive tags and the software will maintain your inventory, it will update, it'll flag you if assets are not where they're supposed to be. Some really cool stuff guys. I highly suggest taking a look into some of these RFID asset management systems that are way better than some of the systems that I've used for years because the software is often where these systems fail, all right? Either it's not being maintained or the software in general is not user friendly, okay? So if the biomeds don't have access to it because ISD or uh, IT doesn't want to give biomeds access to track our, uh, you know, RFID tags, I've seen that at hospitals. I think my own hospital is one of those. It's like, why would you have hundreds of thousands of dollars into an RFID tracking and not give people access to see where these assets are at. It's, it happens, guys. If your IT department is really a pain in the butt to work with, maybe having one of these uh, central RFID tracking systems isn't for you. I mean, you gotta fix the people before you can fix the process. So the software is a real pain. I'm, I'm telling you right now, um, you're gonna have to invest time manpower and, and energy and money into the software to maintain it because garbage in, garbage out. So that means you have to correctly label and maintain your antenna systems. You have to properly train staff on how to track stuff. You have to give them access to the software to know how to track stuff because at the hospital I'm currently at, I have to call somebody up, read off an asset, and he will tell me what room it's in. I don't want to call anybody, guys. I want to have access to look up all these assets myself. And I would like to have one of the RFID scanning guns because if I got some of these assets tagged on stuff and I'm looking for those assets, I don't want to have to look for one asset. Guys, we are biobids. We look for hundreds of assets, okay? 
could you imagine the amount of manpower it would take for me to sit there and go out and and you know request current status updates on 100 assets it's just not reasonable so to have an rfid gun where i could export you know my pm list into the gun or into my smartphone and then you walk around scanning with a scan gun you know because the scan guns will actually tell you what position it's in so if you're in tracking mode you have your gun you you go back and forth and it'll say you're getting warmer 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 and it'll tell you what drawer something is in or you know what room something's in if you got a bunch of patient rooms all lined up and you just kind of walk down through there scanning it's a good process and I love RFID tracking systems it's just hospitals have to commit and they have to really commit seriously all people have to be on board IT has to be on board the biomeds have to be on board to budget for it correctly and to have an action plan to maintain it because in almost every hospital I've been to this system has failed and that's why I'm trying to help you guys out because if you and your hospitals are going to get involved with RFID tracking systems your productivity can potentially and probably will go up but for how long because what's going to happen is you're going to have batteries die and your tag's going to die it's going to become useless or your software subscription is going to end you're not going to renew your software subscription or you are just not going to update your tags and over time you know you're going to have a bunch of asset tags out there that no longer exist because nobody took them out of the system when the asset tag died so that is what i want to talk to you guys about rfid tracking systems i'm not here to dog the systems but just to let you know it is one of those things that you just have to really commit to if you're going to get involved with it it sounds like it's a good idea if you're a smaller facility maybe an rfid passive system with a tracking gun is probably the way to go if you guys have more questions please go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below i'd love to hear what you guys say about it because i myself i'm a little biased because i've never honestly ever seen the system work the way it was advertised and there you have it guys rfid tracking systems in a nutshell thanks for watching